Joined by Justin Robert Young in Oakland. What's going on, Jeremiah? <laughs> oh my God! Uh, can we just get a big uh, a big round of applause? No sense in uh, keeping them around in the shadows. Let's bring them on. Uh, Mike TV, the man who played the music on on that our our intro song here, but uh, the lyrics, which uh, normally are Mike as well. Uh, who sang the lyrics on Nugs, uh, Mike? Oh, yeah, that was uh, that was none other than uh, than uh, T- well, the, the internet's uh, Will Harris, so uh, the okay, original okay. singer uh, of the yes. song. Except then, uh, I don't know if we can say all of why Will was the way that Will was when oh. he was up on stage. <laughs> I, 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 what we can do is maybe compare and contrast, uh, Bryce. If if you can invest a little bit of time in getting us the original footage of the original performance, it uh-huh. would be good to compare and contrast that. So so you and Will Harris were together to to make this cleaned up version yeah yeah i mean i mean uh yeah we uh so i i told him i'm like i'm like we should definitely do like a sort of like uh, like a studio demo version of it and he's like yeah i'll i'll, I'll put some you know i'll go into a studio and record some vocals wait, I'm like, wait, All right, an great. actual studio yeah 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 so oh, he actually, yeah, oh, yeah. you think you think will's posh ass was fucking plugging in a a, 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 a usb snowball and singing it into his closet <laughs> that's Fuck what no. i we thought got in the studio yeah, I mean, I mean, listen. I mean, it's it's a great recording. He's got a great voice. I mean, He's I can't. Got a great I, I, you know, voice. Like, yeah, I know. It was great, and it, and, it, and he added he added some embellishments to the original performance, and I was like, that's really like lovely yeah, you, and sweet nugs. I'm like, that's awesome. Yeah, you can hear him uh, take a little dance. Yeah. He he he, uh, he veers a little bit off script the there. Pipes. Wait, he did multiple songs that night. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I really love you, cuz. 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 Yeah. I'm sorry, uh, were you guys yeah. singing about cunts? No, it was, uh. I was, wasn't that the, wasn't that the 1976 song? Wasn't that he was, that you guys, like, man, you guys gave him a lot of rope and he just went, woo. <laughs> Well, all right. So, if you, didn't, if you didn't listen to the to the nerdtacular episode of the show, uh, Will was there in in America. So, anytime he's in America, we got to put him on the show because he's the best. And uh, he was not. What's the best way to say? It? He was not of his full faculties after days I mean, uh, a day long uh, activity. You you might imply that he was accessing greater faculties. He had ascended <laughs> yeah, yeah. beyond the sober planes to a new level. Uh, yeah. yeah. Let's go with that. Uh, <laughs> the altitude. The altitude is course it affects the uh, body. He was he was so, channeling Bukowski and uh, uh, Chong. You know, like that was you know, like this. 
<laughs> so here's the thing. So he gets up on stage and he's and he's uh, effectively incoherent. And and so uh, Brian and I have to make the decision because you can't just kick. You can't just be like, Will, you are making literally no sense. You gotta get <laughs> off the stage. Like you you flew out of here from England in in part to be on the show. So we got to figure out something. And so you put him in the one situation where. Win, lose, or draw, it's comedy, which is Mike TV was already up there playing songs. How about you sing a song with Mike? You improv a song with Mike. And thankfully, it Dude, ended. stuck the landing. Stuck the landing. Yeah. yeah. Well, well, no. He did a right one, which meant we could stick the landing and just go, Will Harris, everybody. <laughs> right. No, fair enough. Uh, yeah, but, the 1976 uh, one was. That was fun in the moment. Song you guys did was hilarious. That was amazing, and and uh, uh, never, never, never fails to amaze me how much talent is around us at all times. Amen. Uh, yeah. Anyway, Brian, what's going on, man? We saw a, we saw an eclipse. We saw an eclipse. I spent you four did. days flexing my whole body. You ever you ever you ever you ever driven a a, a big rig? No, like a. Oh. Uh, like like an eighteen wheeler or something like that. Yeah, no, neither I've have never, I. no, I've never, never, never driven a, an eighteen wheel rig down I, I, old I, highway sixty six. N- neither have I, but I did drive an RV, and that was like the bus size RVs. Uh sure, let's say that it was might have been a little bit smaller, might have been a it van a with a short bus. <laughs> I, I drove a short bus, but that didn't make it any less scary at 75 no. miles an hour. It was In fact, definitely intense. Stuff. Intense. Uh, yeah, man, we went up, we looked at the face of God. It was amazing. Uh, we uh, uh, Huge, huge thanks to Paul Freeland and his entire family for having us out. Uh, we went out on, we were on a lake with a beach. And we looked up and we saw the sun vanish and a ring of fire emerge. And the, we looked at the face of God and we're like, cool story, bro. And then we <laughs> came home. Uh, and it was it was a good it was worth it. It was it was uh, worth doing it. It was a lot. It was a lot. I, I'm going to say Yes. But you were you you had a totally different enthusiasm on the Weird Things podcast today. On the Weird Thing podcast, I'm not as honest as I am here. Oh, it was it was a lot. <laughs> it was a lot. It was. Wait, a... hold on. Wait a minute. Yeah, no, I I had the same reaction. <laughs> uh, but but Bryce, thank God you 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 pulled it out because I was gonna let you go with it. So wait, hold on. Wait a minute. Uh, th- there's a totally different. Now the mask has fallen off. Before you were doing, <laughs> go listen to Weird Things because you're gonna hear an unbridled evangelism for not only his trip specifically. But eclipses in general to the point where now he will never miss another eclipse. Well, that and, was, and, 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 yes, and now yes. we hear a different story. Yes, that to was all 12 of that. o'clock, Brian. Okay, oh, yes to all of that. All of those things are true. Like, yeah. like the eclipse objectively is one of the most important, extraordinary things I've ever seen in my entire life. However, now that we're on night attack, I can say the act of taking five people from one coast. The southern coast of America <laughs> the to coast. the northern coast. <laughs> <laughs> it's a uh, the wheat coast. It's just a lot. So okay, the so so coast of North America. <laughs> the soybean coast. <laughs> so 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 uh, it's exhausting. I mean, those those ideas aren't contradictory as much as we're making you twist. Cor- cor- correct, right? So so like understand that that um. When the plan was hatched and we went and got the RV, in my mind, it's like, oh, this will be great. I'll drive some. Bonnie will drive some. We'll get there. We'll see the eclipse. Within like 20 minutes of getting behind the wheel and feeling the fact that I'm driving a giant fucking sail down the highway and then, you know, blowing one way or the other and speed limits are are fast. 75 miles an hour is fast to drive a goddamn truck. And then, uh, and and so you're driving and then, and then like very quickly I realized, oh, I am the only one who will drive this entire trip long. Yeah. And then uh, you do the math and you're like, where are we going? We don't know. How far is it? A long way. How many days? Two days uh, up and two days down. And you realize, oh, wait, I'm going to spend four goddamn days, four eight-hour days flexing your entire body. Just he, yeah, the entire way, up and down. Uh, and, and that displeased you. That was not a good experience. It was 
It was I a lot. He, I think he did great. And then there was the moment Uh-oh. when. Oh. <laughs> hold on, hold on. Whoa, 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 whoa. Oh, oh, hold on, wait a minute, hold on. Oh, I'd like to do uh, a, uh, a, a new segment we like to call Spilling the Tea with Bonnie. Yes. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> Bonnie Spilling the Tea with Bonnie. Okay, all right. First no, of all, no, no, speaking no, no. of spilling the tea, can I explain that this whole trip began with the, with everybody in the house banging on the door, kicking open, like, Dad, we got to go, we got to go, we got to go. So I get up and we go. And there's this moment that I catch Bonnie with her arms <laughs> all the way around our Keurig coffee maker, walking it out to the to the van. And I was what? like, uh, I was like, oh, you are not bringing a Keurig automatic coffee maker. And then Bonnie, who clearly had rehearsed this before before time, I totally s- had. I already had this argument in my launches head. Launches into like a five minute diatribe. You're like, 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 you want me to punch you every day? Is that what you want? Is that what you want? And then uh, and I was like, so wait, wait, she wanted that. That doesn't even sound like a. Well, actually, when you think about it, we don't have to stop and this, that, and the other. It was just a full taxi driver, like you looking at me, uh, uh, like, yep. like just push all the chips into the center of the table. Would you like violence? Because if you don't, picture, why could you picture, bring this curing that I already have in my hands? Picture all of that from the love of your life while she's still hugging the curing. <laughs> so like, like, like spewing venom and bile <laughs> while hugging no, a curing. No, the best part was that the 13 year old who now gets these social things like, you know, if she was like half her age and she would have been like blah 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 boogers or whatever but <laughs> but no like she is actively laughing at us and goes mom <laughs> I, but in my defense Brian's is you like, really like the Keurig. I, I just want my coffee, and like I can never get my coffee when Brian's in charge of coffee. So. By the way, irony of ironies: yeah. when we got to our destination, there was a Keurig there. Just yeah. saying. Oh yeah, no, of course. Let me just put that out there. there well, wait a minute, wait, 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 wait. that between. wasn't for the RV. What, did you plug it in in the RV? Yeah, I plugged it in the RV. Mm, but yeah, you want to know? That, that's okay, what it's for. Uh, you want to know let, the worst part, though? Yeah, is that you? broke the rv <gasps> by making coffee oh no i did do that <laughs> <laughs> i didn't i just like i just like tripped i tripped she definitely the... tripped the circuit breaker making oh mm. my god wait i thought this segment was spilling the tea with bonnie not on bonnie <laughs> I'm bo- sorry not all right on i'm bonnie. done i'm done all no, right no, go no, ahead no, spill no. the tea no i broke my keurig so if anybody wait, out you there did? yes and it's wait you broke it i did it makes coffee because like really aggressively. I thought that's what now. all does it always sound did. really awful. It, yeah, it does, but now it's twenty times worse. So if you feel sorry for me, then, you, <laughs> then go to my GoFundMe for a new cure. Oh, no. no, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> no, anyways, actually, so Brian is driving like really hard. Like, <laughs> like really hard. Like really hard. Like he's driving really hard. And all of a sudden I hear like a skerfuffle, a, a gerfuffle or whatever. And yeah. I'm just like, what? I look over at Brian and he's having like a conniption fit in his seat. And I'm like, what? And he goes, well, maybe the four-year-old shouldn't hit me with my own hat. And then oh, like, Jesus. I'm like going, because I'm blind on my left side, so I am completely, unless I want to just stare at Brian the whole time, like, I'm oblivious to everything he's doing in the driver's seat, because I'm like, do, 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 I'm making my website, you know, so, I'm doing so, all, so, this, so, okay, all this, this work This is worth sharing. So, so I'm driving, and of course, Bonnie is blind on her left side, and so she's not watching, but uh, Callie, you know, removes her seatbelt, walks over, and, and just leans in right on my face, like, Dad! Hi, Dad. And of course, you know, you know, muscles uh, driving straight and all that stuff. And then, um, and then I'm like, no, 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 no. And she goes, ha, ha, ha. And she's shoving stuff in my face. I'm like, no, sweetheart, no. And then she grabs my hat and starts beating me <laughs> with my own hat. And the entire time, I'm waiting for Bonnie to intercede, and I'm realizing it's not going to happen. It, 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 that's not incoming, and so. I overreacted. Me? No, over- I wasn't yeah. even. I wasn't trying to bust balls. I thought you did great. I just was. I was just gonna be like, and I. It, so I have a a child actively trying to like distract the driver, and 
I'm oblivious to it. I just thought it was a funny moment. Because Hilarious. not only are you Hilarious. Not Hilarious. only are you like flexing the whole way, but you're also beating the off four year olds. Yeah. Uh, that swatting away four year olds. Oh, <laughs> beating off four year olds. That's right. That's what I do. And At least you know the new Cogswell song. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, no, Brian did great. He was he was fab. I'm just bragging on him because he was fabulous dad. Because even though, even though it was stressful driving the truck, and I especially appreciated that he never put me on the spot like, "Are you going to drive?" You know, because I was just like, Dude, oh, no, no, I knew, I knew." Because I was just like, yeah. "No, <laughs> no, no." He was super dad because he was I mean, you know, like. So we get to a stopping, a stopping spot, and he was, like, totally chill for the kids. Like, to go from, like, oh, my God, we're all going to die to, like, hey, let's hang out and play a game. It was pretty great. Yeah. So it was, it was, it was good daddy. But it was a lot. You had, you had a lot on your shoulders, and, and uh, although the, the payoff was worth it, uh, very glad it was over. Um, glad we did it. I don't want to say I'm glad it's over, but I'm glad we did it. What what about you, man? So so why exactly did you call off your trip? Uh because because you're bulging bulges? Oh yeah, a bummer stupid reasons. You know, I I you know, the back uh, was really acting up and I had to make the decision to not go not only to Portland, but really to to Gen Con was the biggest decision. I was going to go up there and hawk the game and the back has been really, really bad, and uh, so I had to not do it. And then I would felt like a real bag of shit if I had bailed on my business uh, obligations and then also went on a trip up to Portland to come to go see the Eclipse or whatever. So and That's I, one of those, like, be, uh, like, like if you stay home from school, you don't get to play that same day? Yeah, you know? I mean, it was just and, – and also it's like our, either I have a commitment to, to not travel on the back or I don't. And so I had to not do it. So, I mean, there's not really much fun there. Well, so we touched on it a bit last time, but like you got an assessment and you have a treatment situation all figured out, right? Yeah, like, I, don't, like, I mean, we don't need to spend a lot of time on this, but uh, right. uh, uh, I, I, I got a cortisone shot and everything feels a lot better. Dude, Woo. that's awesome. what I hear about the cortisone shots is uh, yeah, they make things feel better. Mm, how better? <laughs> Tell me about it. No. no. Congrats, Jason. That's great. Uh, uh, yeah. I mean, again, we can we can we can not dwell on it because it's not fun. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, well, so what else, man? What what else you got going on in your world? Uh, I don't know, dude. Just uh, you know, Ashley's in Mexico. She's in Mexico what? City. What? Why? Wow. wow. Yeah, she's she's bringing Mexican wrestling to the to to the masses on uh, Holy Saturday. Holy shit! Uh, really? Uh, one of the, the biggest wrestling promotions in Mexico, AAA, will for the first time ever broadcast Triple Mania, their biggest show of the year, live on Twitch for free. Wow. Uh, so Lucha Libre awesome. AAA is the channel, and then uh, Lucha Libre underscore English, I think, is the, the English feed they're going to be doing. That is awesome. amazing, man. Uh, so, yeah, so she's uh, she's gone down there and... Uh, just being the point person for Twitch, so it's uh, it's super rad that she's uh, continuing to to bring so much awesome wrestling for free to people. But uh, you know, it's a it's a busy season for her because we got that she had that this weekend, and then uh, and then holy shit, man, Dragon Con is next fucking weekend. Holy cow! Oh, yeah, sneaking up on us. Uh, I'm gonna be staying with the Durans, and by I, I mean we, me and Bryce, we're yeah. gonna stay at the Durans. Uh, you're 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 shacking up with 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 the, with the Durans there. Is that because you didn't book a fucking hotel? Well, the moment I was about to book a hotel, mm-hmm. Bill says, "Hey, do you have a hotel?" And me answering honestly was like, "No, no, I do not." And he was like, "Well, don't worry about it. You're good." And then I was like, "That's great." And then I thought to myself, I was like, "Dude, every con I've been to, the Durans hotel room have been." Like the party that never stops. I've never walked past the room and not still seen shots going. And 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 uh, shots, <laughs> shots, shots, shots. Thank well, you for being a friend. Well, here's all I know about you and crowded hotel rooms is that you usually, well, y- your old standby used to be Tom Merritt always gets a room by himself. I can take naps in the other bed. Yes. Uh, uh, you no longer have a Tom Merritt these days. Well, no, <laughs> no, I don't. And also. 
also, I've changed over the last five years because it used to be like, uh, yeah, no, a hotel room is just another place to party. And nowadays it's like, uh, no, a hotel room is a safe place to retreat and hide from everything. Uh, so basically what I'm saying is uh, I'm going to need a key to your room, Justin, <laughs> next week. <laughs> two. Right. Two. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, I'll tell you what. Um, uh, ask Ashley because I'm not making that decision <laughs> unilaterally. <laughs> but uh, but I think we'll, we'll we'll be able to we'll be able to figure it Wait, out. Wait, I know what it is. Wait, you know what the decision is? Or? No, 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 no. I know where you can get some sleep. Well, uh, at at the shows. <laughs> no, no. Like they have the uh, the room for the. Uh, for the VIP guests that nobody goes to, you can just go. To just the go there. And just, <laughs> just, just sleep. cozy up with a blanket and just sleep. And then anytime, right. like, uh, like, like freaking um, uh, uh, Nathan uh, Fillion comes Edward in. Edward James like, almost comes in, yeah. and I'm just like, would you shush? <laughs> <laughs> and then I lay down again. That's what I think. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, but, dude, yeah. Oh, Jesus, I was trying to think. Somebody sent me a commercial or a little video they made for the second Dragon Con we ever did. Uh, oh, uh, that was, like, such a blast from the past because it was just all clips from the first one. Uh, and the first or, one was in the 50-person room that we were at on the skeptic track or something. Oh, yeah. Uh, uh, it was the room next to the skeptic track. <laughs> it, it, it was the room where we were actively ruining Scott Sigler's <laughs> main gig. It was It was such... The the like the little the, the the beginning of the nucleus uh, of of the Big Bang for everything because like all the friends that we made were from that first show where we were like turning people away we were unexpectedly popular and we were so loud because mostly talks and conventions and everything you can just put up the the little uh, flimsy dividers because no one's ever you're gonna get applause and shit like that but we were fucking loud as shit we were people yelling and screaming and and doing crazy stuff. And apparently it just completely disrupted the fairly sober writers panel that was happening in the uh, in, in the skeptic track right next to it. Yeah, <laughs> about that. Sorry. Uh, yeah. Um, hey, so is there any way to do a second version of and I, I, I don't want to use the name because I know the name is verboten, but 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 the all set up magician it. it Mm. Is, is there any way for us to do that at Dragon Con? Uh, of course. I mean, listen, I got to talk to him. I got to see if he's interested in. Uh, I don't know where his act is these days, there. but uh, but but I think okay. that that. <laughs> yeah, well, all right, here's a answer Hold me on. this. You are um, congratulations, Brian. I'm hiring you. Yeah. As uh, 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 Jackson M. Young's uh, 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 new magic agent, Jack so Young. You are booking him. Where are you booking him? Uh, okay, well, uh, first of all, if I can get him at Dragon Con, then I would like to do it. But not as much. If I have to choose from a menu and there's only one, I want him to show up at Scoop Fest. Because there's a chance that in the audience, Jack Young could get up and perform. Because, like, like uh, the, the, the people who are there, that, that's the whole Penn Sunday School uh aura like like that's Matt King in the audience that's uh that that that's oh I mean that's that's all of magic I mean most of magic lives in Vegas uh uh, uh it is uh it is definitely a uh, I'll tell you, I, I wonder if I could coax uh Stan Allen the publisher of magic magazine out uh, I, I would like show. very much oh. <laughs> for that to happen I so think that would go over very I swear well. to God, if I put up on Facebook that I am performing my my magic. I'm opening for Brian Brushwood with my magic act in right. Vegas. We could get a who's who of of Vegas magic out to see uh, just the curiosity <laughs> between people who have not seen your full show and and the curiosity of what I would do on a magic stage. Did uh, uh Mike? Uh, did did you ever invest the time to, to to watch Justin perform his magic show? I I did. I I caught I caught the entirety of the, of the like a uh, yeah. Uh, I think you guys played a bit of it when yeah, we, when last was that last week that we played a bit of it. Yeah, we we talked about this last week and played. Some yeah. Of it. yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. Right, it's right awesome. On. It's epic. I mean, that's that's uh, yeah, amazing. 
Uh, I feel so, like he might he might need uh, he might need to refine things a little bit, but I I think I think we've got we've got the bones we've okay, got the bones so of the bit right there. I, I, I was trying to think of like what would you do for an encore with when everybody knew the bit? Yeah, <laughs> feel me out here. Okay, what if go. what if you were a magician who kept getting ready, not ever executing, but but yeah. was constantly on the precipice of doing a hugely racist act <laughs> so it's like you push out this cabinet this is... <laughs> with chinese characters all over it and then you put on a turban and then you you put on like a mustache like a turkish mustache or whatever and then and then yeah, like you're, a, you're uh, setting uh, everything up getting everyone comfortable and then and then you take off the mustache you take off the turban and you push the box off stage huh huh Oh my god. No? <laughs> All right. Uh yeah, yeah. I'm not going to say no. <laughs> you break out you roll out an upside down cross and <laughs> <laughs> One of like, the idea has got to be that it's always you are you yeah. are always the racism is happening in the audience's mind. Correct. Like Correct. I am never <laughs> intentionally doing anything, but it's like but you always just use things like cuz the, that's the other element is that it is kind of a parody of magicians' acts that are they're they're racist because magicians are so creatively bankrupt that they, they just read the patter that was written in 1931. Correct, correct, and and it's so it's just, all accidental racism of like in my tours, and it's like I remember it being eight years old and the instructions in my Siegfried and Roy magic kit said, talk about your journeys to the deep Indian uh, uh, peninsula or whatever. And then, and then reveal this plastic piece of garbage that has a rope that doesn't fall out. Right. But it's always, but it's always that. So you just, you just have to say like, well, when I was on the plane uh, uh, to my worldwide travels or something, just like always get people right to the edge of some racial element and then just kind of pull up or take off the, you know, like take off the turban or put down the, the, the vase or whatever. What would be amazing if you found like new, new waters to offend where it's just like in my travels in the American deep South. And then they, they roll on this cross with like a, a Tinder all over it. And, and, and they, they pour gas all over it, but you never light it on fire. <laughs> no, no, no. Cause then uh, we're going, we're going yeah, you break out to the idea like, that, like, that, that, like, like scissors no, and we're not, like, everybody, we're not everybody look under your chair. Cross. You'll find a sheet down there. Uh, tuck yourself in for a good night's sleep because this is a great episode coming up. <laughs> well, you have the gas, the gas douse cross, and you just like pull out a match. You light it only to smoke a cigarette. <laughs> like, oh, Are we not allowed to do this anymore? <laughs> I'm sorry. Obama. I know it's offensive to smoke in front of you, but what are you? What are you gonna do? Like, let's get this let's get this monstrosity out of here. It smells like gas. <laughs> uh yeah, so anyway, that's my suggestion to you if you want to. All right, I'm, uh, I'll tell you uh, as so far you've booked me possibly for a gig as the manager of Jackson M Young and uh you have suggested that I uh, uh, uh encore the all set up magician with the Racist magician, <laughs> <laughs> but but uh, specifically he's not racist. Like 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 I mean, you can get up to that line. Like the the definitely not he's, racist magician, and then being just... racist, uh, it... <laughs> racist to Jason. Yeah, being cutting out a hole, a racism shaped hole is still. <laughs> It's still racist, you think? Yes. yes. I don't know. I feel. I, know. I feel like that's on the audience. I don't know that you get to. I feel like shame on, on you, audience, for assuming. Yeah, that yeah, this for making. Yeah, person. the assumption. Yeah, that's exactly right. I think mm. the audience. Uh, I don't know. I mean, that it's such a funny joke when the audience fills in the blanks and they're just like, "Oh, I can't believe I went there." You know, like some song set it up. That's like, on you. Like the rhyme pattern <laughs> maybe, is going to be like you know a what? cuss word, and then it's not the cuss word. And Hold on, what, like, but what, still, what, if, what if what if it's Justin <laughs> Young? The and you you put quotes around the colorful magician, and then oh. he does the trick. You're totally oh. writing. <laughs> then people are waiting. Wait, oh. what's colorful about him? Uh, no, uh, we're. 
Brian, I don't think you're seeing the the point here. This is this is a, a just racism. This, this is, is not a joke no. about racism. No, no, I, I don't know. I it's like it's like me. oh, it's the magician that only says the N word instead of Alakazam. Like that's still somebody saying the N word. No, but like if we can we can we make that your name? <laughs> Justin <Yes>. quote <laughs> the magician who says the N word instead of Alakazam. Sam Young. Yeah, nincompoop. <laughs> yeah, maybe maybe that's what you do. Is you, is you do it, but but your magic word is always a, another N word. Oh Never God, mind. I don't know. <laughs> this this is <laughs> nonsense. <laughs> would you would you uh, like to buy? That's what your mind <laughs> believes. <laughs> yeah. Nitty Kazam. It's just oh, me. Hi, I would like to introduce you to the wide. Beautiful, mysterious <laughs> world of the N word. <laughs> ah, there are N words all around us. Do all of you are confused by the outside world? I say, look inward. Oh. <laughs> no, no, no. Okay. You made a pun. <laughs> yeah. I love puns. Funny. <laughs> Funny, please. Yeah, that <laughs> might not look a betrayal <laughs> for Bryce. Right. He's like, Judas. <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> no. <laughs> so, I'll, I'll tell you what. Here's a word. Uh, you don't need to say the, the N word. Say the P word. <laughs> Patreon.com <laughs> slash night attack. Heck is yeah, where... man. Patreon.com is where you can keep us loud, live, and independent. We're just two young brothers you know so well. Uh, and, uh, pay money to us and we'll go to hell. It started way what? back in history at a network called Twit and me. Um, <laughs> Uh, sorry, I'm trying to. Uh, it's very difficult. I don't to know why you keep putting yourself in this corner. Yeah. What? Yeah, it, yeah. It's, it's just terrible. do it. Uh, do the love. Do the love shack thing. <laughs> <laughs> love shack. If you like night attack and you want to keep them running, then you should give them some money, honey. <laughs> it's a night attack it's jungle. jungle. <laughs> Patreon.com slash uh, Night Attack. Uh, hey, Bryce, uh, what do folks get as soon as they uh, they, they come on uh, to become a patron? Oh, you get a lot of great stuff. You get the RSS feed with the pre-show and the after show. You get those before uh, before anybody else gets them, including YouTube links. Uh, you also, if you upgrade your pledge to a dollar or more sometime in the week, you have a chance of... Ladies and gentlemen, it's time for the Night Attack. New Patreon name chant corner hour. It's an hour of. <laughs> All right, you ready? Uh, yeah. Let's let's uh. Let's do it. I don't I don't want to I don't want to classify everyone of this kind of name, and I think you know what kind of name I'm talking about. Oh, Christ. People with this kind of name, they're sitting there. Just, yeah. Just having that name. Just what? being that that name, like just running around saying their name all the time. Like, right? come on, man, dude. I'm I'm gonna bet this mf'er is yeah. is super puffy, super mm. puffy, like round, like a donut, and yeah. pink, like the underbelly. It's a very very weird place to go for a podcast audience, bro. Right. <laughs> round like a donut and pink, like 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 a like a like a podcaster, like a Brian Brushwood. <laughs> I said podcaster. I kept it generic. Um, Where are you going with this? <clears throat> uh, dude, I don't know what you're doing, but I hope you're defeating your enemies. Kirby, Kirby Evans. Evans. Kirby Evans. Kirby Evans. <laughs> Kirby Evans. <laughs> Kirby Evans! Kirby Evans! I keep you wondering who... Up. You fucked up! You fucked up! You fucked up! You fucked up! Every time we clapped, I thought, like, when is this gonna end? And I realized it won't. You gotta stop at three. Um, you gotta stop at three. <clears throat> uh, Mike. 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 Mike, Mike TV, TV. Yes, yes, yes. meet I, 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 Kirby Evans. Kirby Evans. Yes, I, 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 was, I was making it out. I was. I, was, I, was, I, was, I, was, I saw you clapping. I'm like, I can't get that.
Yeah. 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 Let's uh, go, Kirby. <laughs> If you were to say something to Kirby Evans right now, what would it be, and why would it be repeating his name over and over again? And also, why would you make it into a song the way you're about to do? Oh, God. <laughs> hey, uh, two blocks, play us music when we demand it. So pushy. <laughs> Mike, Mike, you don't have to make a song. I'm, I'm like Kirby Evans, who does nothing but give. Oh, <laughs> so, uh, <clears throat> uh, thank you, Kirby Evans. Yeah, uh, by the way, and also thank you to Ali Omario, who's now following. This is also the one moment. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> this is also the one moment on the show when we uh, when we go full Twitch and uh, and, and, and have our big... <laughs> gigantic uh, screen hogging graphics show up whenever anybody subscri uh, subscribes. So thank you to NSFW Ben. W Scott is uh, Thank one. you to W Scott is one. <laughs> uh, uh, earlier. Right now, the GIF we're doing this week. Brian, how would you describe this GIF? Uh, We've talked about it so many times. Why are you embarrassed? I, <laughs> it's definitely, a, I'm getting a facial. That's what it is. Uh, <laughs> you are getting the old Sriracha Bukaki, as it was called. Sriracha Bukaki! Oh, doctor, making sure you got all of it in every crevice. Yeah. <laughs> uh, also, thank you to Soka Chung and Benito Boom Crash, Shift Lock, Amazon Primed, and uh, <laughs> Justin <laughs> R. Young. Oh, no. Yep. Uh, <laughs> Starlit Rocker, thank you for following. <laughs> Violating body, Thank you, body finally caught herself on the animated. Oh game. yeah, she's the following. Game. What was I doing? You were doing your blind <laughs> dance from South by Southwest. Oh, but that's yeah. why I had uh, a towel. Let's go seven six two. Thank you. Open by you. Where are you? Were you uncomfortable taking that shot in the face? Thank you to open by you. I mean, uh, I definitely vomited shortly thereafter. Right. You were definitely, yeah, uh, uh, questionable on, on how much was the sriracha facial and how much was you being sick going into it. But I don't think either helped the other. Yeah, no. Uh, anyway, that's what happens when you... So we have, we, we have a game, right, Bryce? Uh, kinda. I think so. <laughs> this, is, this, is a, this is a weird one today. Uh, we're, we're getting in new Finally, reports. we're getting to the weird one. I'm glad, on I'm glad time. that what's, I mean, this is a weird time, mm -hmm. right? Like, this is a weird day for us. Like, this is, this is good. We should, now is the time that we should get avant-garde. Let's get, let's get weird, yeah. man. Let's get freaky. Well, is it a game that's in praise of Sheriff Joe Arpaio? <laughs> yeah. Right. Okay. Right. Yeah. Hooray yeah. for truth. <laughs> the Sheriff Joe Arpaio story. No, I game. think, well, 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 it's, it's less of a well, game. And and it, it's, hey, <laughs> it's me, Sheriff Joe Arpaio. Oh, Should sorry. I go to work or have a cup of coffee? <laughs> like I, I would say, is don't go it? to work. Is that the D man? <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, no. uh, yeah, I'm sorry. Are you are you defending Sheriff oh, Joe Arpaio? It is I, the 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 D man. I've I've now taken over for Sheriff Joe. Uh, it the 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 D doesn't stand for detention. Brian. <laughs> okay, but 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 how do you plan to? I mean, he's been pardoned by the president. How do you? Are you going to prosecute after this? Uh, the 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 D man only knows one true justice, and that is the holy bonds of matrimony only <laughs> to be ended in a spectacular <laughs> divorce, of which I have been divorced a American record sixty three times. That's right. You've been divorced quite a few times, D man. Is that right? I, uh, that is that is what I have an American uh, record for. I, I have been I have been married and and divorced. And by the way, yeah. my dance card is not yet full, ladies. Ooh. The deep man available, <laughs> but not for long, because we'll probably get divorced. <laughs> <laughs> so, hold on. If I could just follow, dip, dip back for a sec. That's the American sure, record. Yeah. The hello, American hello. Record. It is Hi. good to speak with you. Nice. Uh, I, I always enjoy uh, communicating with people. I am the D man. <laughs> so I don't think we. So you've got the American record. How does that stack up to other nations? <laughs> oh, record? there are many, uh, many, many cultures. A uh, young one have many different ways young of uh, uh, uniting and dividing. <laughs> In fact, uh, I will never be able to stack up to some of the uh, majestic records in the vast Orient, uh, where uh, <laughs> the many vast persons. Orient. 
uh, many, many uh, divorce records uh, stack into the triple to quadruple digits. Oh, how many countries quadruple. can you name? <laughs> how many countries can you name from the vast Orient? Oh, Brian, uh, uh, gentleman never tells. <laughs> That's true. He's a respectable D-man. It is it is I, the 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 D-man. I, I never reveal uh the secrets, uh the carnal delights of any of my sixty-three D's. Uh but uh neither will I reveal to you the countries that I know biblically. <laughs> okay. Biblically? You've married a and divorced a country? Yeah, yeah. Oh, well, if it, uh, Bonnie, uh, uh, d dare to dream. <laughs> uh, I could easily get my my record up uh, many, many, many uh, numbers from sixty three. <laughs> that's a that's a funny thought to the D man. <laughs> All right, well, thank uh, you. Uh, uh, so, uh, uh, anyway, uh, see you later. See you later. <laughs> see you later. <laughs> oh, the D man, everybody. Glad he was there. Oh, my God. Yeah, that's good. I'm glad he was there. Oh, my that's, God. Uh, that's crazy. <laughs> so, I, uh, you know, those uh, prestige podcasts that are, you know, you got, you got Serial, you got S Town, yeah. you got, uh, what is it, Missing Richard Simmons, right? Yeah. Uh, they're they're chronicling true events, and uh, uh, you know there's there's really an epidemic going around, and I think it's going to continue happening for a little while. And I, I think that we here can report on the facts of what is happening uh, across the globe, across the globe uh, in in the segment that I'm calling "Brunch of the Living Killennials." Oh my god, we have a graphic right. and everything. And it's that exact clip art yeah, of come teenagers on, Jesus, when I touch teens. You own teams. the same stock footage from the last millennial ah. pit we did? Oh, oh wait, I gotta see it again. One more time. Sure, Bryce. one more time. Yeah, one more time. <laughs> but also the music sounds spooky now. Uh, <laughs> So I thought I thought maybe we could report on some of the industries that these killennials are just just just, are just ruining, destroying. just ruining, just ah. millennials mm -hmm. fucking up our shit. They're fucking up everyone's shit. Yeah, yeah. I, I just yeah. read the other day about how they're killing the wine industry. Yeah, talk about talk, talk, talk about that. W h i n e. Yeah, <laughs> they're, no, they're, no, they're, that's in a boon. That right one's now. going yeah. pretty yeah, well. Yeah, that's in a boon. Yeah, I know they're drinking so much wine and they know so much about it that the. Who can sell it to them? <laughs> Nobody. They just go oh, for it God. themselves. That's that's a that's a common thing that a lot of people don't know. That most people, most millennials who buy wine, will only buy it from uh, a very experienced shaman. <laughs> that's right. Well, I mean, I mean uh, culturally, what is... happens is you get into a circle, you talk about your grievances, and then yeah. you take the wine, and the shaman will say, "Drink it up, bro." <laughs> and then you drink. Yeah. Thanks, bro. And then, uh, <laughs> and then, uh, and then you, you play cards, and then you end in, in a fist fight, right? Yeah. I mean, uh, yeah. wine, if the, mille if, the, sorry, if the collennials have their way, yeah. wine will only be consumed while playing social tabletop games. Yes. Sitting here in my formerly nicotine-stained fingers. I, fucking, I was about to go to it. I was about to go to it. You fucking snaked me, you bitch. <laughs> certainly. Certainly. I was like, fuck, like, I can't do two voices, like, right back to back. I can't go right from D-Man to Rush. And you, you got it. You, it leaked out of my brain and into your mouth. It's amazing. I'm glad we are of one uh, mind, sir. Okay, so so uh, let's stick it to the M's. Let's put our D's in the M's. A direct message, millennials. <laughs> I, I like this. You're speaking their language. You're trying to infiltrate their numbers. The, the roving millennials. Yeah. Uh, uh, we need we need to stop them, Bryce, before they kill again. That's right. All right. So uh, in, in this segment, a brunch of the living killer. I mean, they already took away. Our... Oh, we have a sex. Is that OMG Chad? <laughs> no, <laughs> yeah, they're all OMG. they're all Chad. That's the weird part. <laughs> uh, I'm I'm just getting a report now that Colonials are killing beer. Uh -huh. They're killing. I uh -huh. believe it. They're killing beer. Yeah, they are. So. Uh, I'm sorry. What is this game? <laughs> <laughs> well, we're having first-hand reports. Weren't they, first aren't they actually brewing it in their mouth? Aren't they like? Do, don't they have a little thing now where they they take the mm -hmm. they actually 
you know, the water, the yeast, the whatever, and they just let it ferment in their mouths because yeah. they want it to be like the freshest, most yeah. pure. That's Brew apparently it a in your right mouth. Now. It's crazy. Like, like little, I said your motherfucking mouth. It's called the, uh, the, the Frank Reynolds Brewery is what they call it. They <laughs> throw it all in your mouth, wait six weeks. Uh, so wait a minute. Hold on. Wait, wait. Is, it, is this a game or are we just, are we just riffing on this here, Brad? <laughs> we're, we're just I riffing. Don't know. I don't know. All right. Here, here we go. All right. No, around. we're riffing. Just play with Here's me. Fucking... Here's the goddamn problem. All right, with, with with millennials killing beer. All right. Yeah. When you really think about it, what are they gonna do with this beer? Probably not drink it. Mm-mm. You know what they're using it for? Setting it up a little garden, uh, maybe uh, pouring it on. You know, probably feeding it to Antifa, like just doing all the stuff that millennials love to do. Yeah. Uh, I, I, yeah, I, man. What, you know what they use the beer for? To complain to their parents about their rents uh, and uh, that. What? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> see, they're not. You know, you ever, it. You ever, man, you ever see a millennial that's out here saying like, like, oh, my rent's so high. Why don't we have our Vietnam? Like, just, uh, just a bunch of the same nonsense over and over. And <laughs> that over is over. the number one thing I hear from millennials: is where's our Vietnam? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Like, why yeah. can't we Side be the greatest the generation? Hashtag think about it. Well, yeah. they're, they're Hasht- t- hashtag colonial fields. Field. Oh, oh God. no! Fuck hey. it's too dark, too dark. Nice. I don't even know what I'm talking about. I just you, you know exactly what you're talking about, Bonnie. You know exactly what you said. My God, Bonnie! Jesus, this is a family news program. <laughs> I love it. I just pick words that I've heard out of the ether, and then all of a sudden I'm like Satan. I'm sorry. <laughs> don't break All right. Oh, oh, uh, I, oh, sorry. Dark as the eclipse, they say. <laughs> We've got we've oh got we've, we've got a breaking a breaking news new bit for uh, brunch of the living millennials. Yeah, <laughs> I like we're just calling the bits. <laughs> well, it's it's segments. It's it's more segments, but I, I, I haven't worked in news very long. <laughs> but the millennials have killed golf. Justin, the millennials have killed golf, and this is oh uh, well. Is a you sad know, day. hey, listen. Long was golf the place where white people could talk to each other, and now even that must be taken away. By the Killennials. Uh, for more on this, we go to senior golf analyst Brian Brushwood. Brian, what can you tell us about the slow erosion of the golf industry? Uh, it's go to golf. Let's go to uh, Mike TV. Mike TV, talk to us about golf. Well, as a former colonial, um, former I can tell you, a you're former. Than me. Uh, oh, this is a this is breaking news. We have yeah. former colonial Michael Television here. A reformed colonial. Yeah, yeah. I'm a reformed colonial. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Th- that's uh, the thing is, is that the one the one issue we had with golf was that. Uh, it wasn't uh, there wasn't enough clubs. There wasn't enough balls. You needed we needed a lot more <laughs> balls in the game. Uh, yeah, you know, millennials. So the uh, many like, millennials uh, uh, insist on any game that they play include it, uh, up to four to seven balls. Uh, uh, yes, yeah, the, they play at all times. Yeah, like they want racquetball. No, racquetballs. Racquetballs. Uh, 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 many yes, of them. Yes. Uh, yes. Footballs. Uh, baseballs. Uh, baseballs. Yes. Like, like throw four or five of them. You want to know what? Whoa, 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 whoa! Hold it's, on. Hold on. I think he's talking like one of them. I think he might be one of them. Who's wait? Who's what? Who? Yeah, 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 yeah. Say say that again. Say that again. Base baseballs? Sounds like one of them to me. <laughs> uh uh one of one of the baseball men? No. <laughs> does, does he want to play the baseball game? A m- millennial. No, millennium oh. Falcon. No. Millennium Falcon. Are you thinking a Will Lenny? You know, you know, like I, a, a I, Will Smith. I am a Will. I'm a big Will Lenny. I'm a big Will Head. Will yeah. Head is oh, no. Hey, yeah, yeah, getting yeah. jiggy with it. Yeah. That's the yeah. jam. Well, hey, 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 Brian. Ben and uh, Bien Venido a uh, Miami. Right? That, that That's a Will Lenny. You, you yeah, sound like one of them. Yeah. How old are you? How old are you? Uh, I, I am I am uh, closing in on don't on you, don't 30 you fucking lie to me. Don't you years lie to me. Of, of age. Or I am 34 years of age. Mm. I'm 57. Bryce, yeah. of course. I knew that. you, Snurdly. You're one of the good ones. <laughs> Don't worry about it. It's fine. Uh, all right. So, uh, so, so, uh, uh, yeah. Golf. I'll tell you what. I wonder if there's another bit of incoming. Yeah. We don't, oh, you, you know what? That 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 report's gonna have to be cut short. We've got another another segment here on on a brunch of the living millennials. 
<laughs> Hold on. What is being yes. played? What is that audio sound like? It's the, it's the bumpers from the last time we did the millennials <laughs> bit, but they're slowed but down. They're slowed down? <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, Some awesome. of them sound really cool. Uh, I, I'm hearing that the that the Killennials have killed bras now. Bras are no longer on the scene. Bonnie Brushwood. Uh, for, uh, uh, oh, I can't believe you called on me. Wait. Also, what else? Because I am not a colonial, but I but have. But you have the report of the uh, new. Yeah. I have fallen can, 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 into. Can we, can we talk some shit right here? <laughs> oh, do you have Bonnie, advantage? Bonnie, Bonnie's. She's out of bras and she's into sticky tits. <laughs> <laughs> <She> <laughs> I'm killing bras too. Bon, Bonnie is now doing this shit where it's like it's a couple of clams with like a, a, a duct tape on the inside that you stick to your tits. Like that's what she's doing. And, and there's this moment at the end of the day where instead of taking off her bra and making the same joke, I love it. It's the best dad joke. Bonnie used to take off her bra and go, oh, what a let down. Instead, at the end of the day, we hear... <laughs> she peels off these sticky clam shells. Oh, wait a minute. Are, are they are they disposable? Or... No, no, they get reused. That's the part that I don't understand. <laughs> but are they you're... cheaper than bras? <laughs> I, I don't understand why she's into them. Body, do you want to justify this? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> these damn colonials. You're testing it out. You're trying to get in the colonials' heads. Yeah, well, it's because of the good marketing. Like <laughs> in my in my Facebook feed, they're just like bras are bad for you. They're killing your tits. And I'm like, oh, You're killing your I, know. Tits. I know. I just want to see that in the corner, in the corner banner and on the side. Yeah, they're you're killing your tits. You're killing like, your tits. <laughs> your boobies. Want to live? <laughs> your puppies want to live. Now, uh, Bonnie, correct me right. if I'm wrong. It sounds like you're placing the blame of this at capitalism. Is that true? <laughs> well, that's why I bought these bras, <laughs> these sticky bras. Uh, yeah. Anyways. Okay. So, wait, so are, how how long how long I, have you been doing the sticky bra thing, Bonnie? i well at at some point I realized you know how like everything like come. What comes again goes again. <laughs> what right, comes again goes around. again. It's the that's around. in the Bible. Story of I read my that. life, sister. Yeah. John three twenty two. What, what comes, comes again, again goes again. again. Oh, Sticky ticks. <laughs> well, this is the Killennials way yeah. of going all sixties, as in like burn your bras but they can't burn their bras they're too uptight for that so yeah. they're like just put sticky tits on so they they, they call it this uh, the mermaiding ins- okay okay bonnie yeah. bonnie how long have you been doing the sticky tit thing and 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 what do you think of it so far okay i don't know because i've nursed three children so like if i could be a fl- i would just want to be like a guy on the side of the wall and go well, not that like I feel like I love the fact that it's not a guy, guy on, the side, on, the, side the, the, on the side of the wall. But a guy. She wants to be Spider Man. Spider Man's big right now. With she wants there to be a gentleman who <laughs> leans back with his arms crossed, I mean, watching her peel off no, no, sticky no, tits. No. I'm not. Wait, I'm, don't you have one? <laughs> I, yeah, but he's. He's my husband. <laughs> He's kind of bound by law, the way my tits used to be bound. But no. Until <laughs> sticky tits came to town. Until the t- up against tits. the wall. Up against the wall. Sticky but tits just, is like, here. Can a woman who's I mean, like sticky tits, great for girls who have never had a baby ba- belly or n- never had a baby boobs, because like <laughs> never had a baby boobs. Yeah, never had a baby boobs. Like, they're all perky and cute. Well, you don't need a bra for those, right? Okay. Yeah, anyways. Okay, Bonnie. What? How long have you been doing the sticky <laughs> tits thing? Doing <laughs> okay. Like- I've been wearing them for like a month. <laughs> okay. Okay. And, and, and it sounds like you are not in love with the sticky tits solution. Well, <laughs> what I like is that, you, oh, it, you know, it's terribly uncomfortable to wear a bra, though, because you get like... Like, it, 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 oh, man, you guys wear a bra for a month, and then you think, 
Sticky tits, yeah. So, oh no, yeah, no, no. I, I don't, I don't doubt it. And listen, the, the vast majority of this audience and everybody else on this show will have zero context as to what the pain is to everyday wear a bra. So I can understand the idea of you doing it. Right. I'm just curious at where we are in the experimentation and okay. what your results so now, are. So now I love not wearing a bra. <laughs> to like, like not having having my boobs telegraphed when I'm cold or when it's... Oh, you like having it be a secret. Yeah. So it's like, like it's like somebody says something and you, you get that shiver through your body and you're like, and you don't even know. You don't even know. You get to hide your boob boners. I, yes, what? I get to put my boob boners away. That's awesome. So like like hiding boob boners is definitely essential. Boob yeah. boners. <laughs> At what point are they going to offer this for guys for the... For actual boners. You want to yeah, put yeah, something yeah. sticky on your uh, wiener? <laughs> that sounds like a bad no, thing. No. Yeah. Well, what it, kind it, of it, It's going to be called dick stickums, and they're going to go right from the uh, stem of your dick wiener uh, all around to the uh, just above your butthole. Uh, dick stickums. I'm here to shoot you. <laughs> Yo, all right. Oh, man. This is a uh, there's a strangler afoot. This sounds like a dick stickums uh, case. Dick, you're a loose dick. <laughs> <laughs> we're, 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 we're licensing the name from famous uh, uh, Old West star, Dick Stickums. <laughs> uh, oh, I, I, so. I, I do believe we're getting one, one last report here of, of Brunch of the Living Colonials. Mm. Yes, yes, that's that's right. My my producer is telling me that that the the only thing that uh, that the the <laughs> Colonials are 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 saving. Our, our fountain pens, fountain pens, uh, sales of fountain pens are going through the roof. Uh, uh, what's next? Uh, peacock feathers? Yeah. Uh, pa uh, parchment scrolls? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> wax uh, wax that's, stamps? That's actually a true thing. A lot of people don't realize that millennials, uh, having been born at a certain time and age, really more respect the idea of a, cal uh, a, a calligraphy written contract that is signed by two fountain pens that were each Dipped in blood by their fathers uh, so yeah. they might know that true honesty exists. You do know that Bonnie like took calligraphy courses, right? Shortly before I she started don't putting know stickers that, on the tits. Nor did I know that, nor do was I that... have any idea why I would know that Bonnie <laughs> was that... took calligraphy courses. <laughs> Was that during her colonial phase? Is that what yeah. you're saying, right? I'm starting to think. Yeah, the this, colonials, this is, this not is the when I go all, all, all judgmental on my, I don't know. Seems to me like you walk around, no bra, you got sticky tits. <laughs> you're, <laughs> yeah. you're, you're doing your calligraphies. Something, something you want to tell us? Me? <laughs> yeah, yeah, sorry. Never yeah. mind. It didn't, didn't I'm work. Also, didn't work. I'm not the colonial killing this conversation. Wow. Oh Jesus! <laughs> <laughs> on fire here, Bonnie. Holy shit! That went really bad. Like that didn't go anyway. <laughs> uh, Bonnie, uh, when 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 you took calligraphy, what was what was the fucking point? <laughs> That's so funny. Well. For me, I was hoping that I would have better handwriting at the end of it. But guess what? <laughs> Calligraphy is just drawing every letter. So you're not learning handwriting. You're learning how to draw letters. And then that really sucks because your drawing brain is different than your spelling brain. <laughs> oh, so you would very neatly write words that, that were not wrong. English. It was, spelled, it was, yeah. <laughs> Got it. It was awful. You had to crumple up the whole thing. And like, yeah. Fuck this shit. Well, that Thanks, makes millennials. Like she's not a colonial because she didn't like that experience. No, yeah. no. But I imagine colonials probably like. <laughs> did uh, did you see that? Letters. Did you see that tweet that uh, Trump retweeted of of the best eclipse ever? <laughs> Oh yeah, uh, I I did. Yeah, that was very controversial. It it uh, it was uh, a, a lot of a uh, sturm and drong around uh, the president's Twitter. Yeah. Well, the thing the thing I don't understand I don't understand the whole furor because it was a naturally you occurring the eclipse, curve. right? That's you know, it's like you, you, that's, you know, really, it's just it comes you, around. You gotta every pay attention to his tweets. It's, it's pretty. <laughs> hey, it's something you want to understand him. Uh, no, uh, Mike, what were you saying? Oh, I was saying that that it's it, that I understand why why there was the furor because it's a naturally occurring thing, right? It happens every handful of you know, like, waka waka. 
Oh wait. Oh, so what you were going for the Fuhrer joke? Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. Was, yeah. Oh, okay. oh. I'm sorry. I <laughs> thought I, I thought that they were jumping on your shit, and I didn't realize that they accurately tra- translated it. Gotcha. No, sorry. Okay. All right. Well, with that barn burner. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Colonials. Thanks. Well, anyway, was, so calligraphy fans, what the but fuck? Also these fewer, kids. Yes. <laughs> I think <laughs> let's go back I to think this sticky is the end of our segment. <laughs> Thank you everyone for this beta episode. Beta. <laughs> 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 Those are some pretty spry zombies, I have to say. So here's the thing, Bryce. Is, is I can't even blame you because because you're at least showing up week after week with bits and ideas. Um, <laughs> yeah. This hey, was, man, listen. They're not all gonna be winners. This you is, know, every once yeah. in a while, you're gonna get a brunch of the colonials in there. Like <laughs> brunch, of, this brunch is, of the colonials. Brunch of the living colonials. Excuse me. It's a specific reference. Uh, oh goddamn! But by the way, hey, we're uh, uh, we are still incubating uh, new bits in the Discord, right? That's right. If you've got uh, a bit idea, you can send it to the Discord nightattack.tv slash Discord, or you can email them mail at nightattack.tv m a i l at nightattack.tv. Uh, also, we are taking submissions right now for an upcoming Night Attack Court bit. Still date TBD on that, but uh, awesome. if you go to bit.ly slash n a court, that's uh, letter n letter n a court. Uh, all our case, uh, you can submit your grievance, and we can see if we can get you some justice. Uh, absolutely. Yes. All right. So we will. Uh, we will definitely do that. I think we got. We still got some time before we get into uh, some of the 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 ending bits, right? Because we don't have a movie draft minute. Right. Oh, What's yeah. Uh, uh, I did mic. get a uh, an email regarding. Uh, uh, here, you guys talk. I'm gonna look at my email. <laughs> How's it going, Mike? Mike, how are you doing? You've. It's been a minute. <laughs> Smooth yeah, transition, uh, Brian. That was a great. That was like, hey, Mike, I need to cover for it. So instead of just saying, hey, Mike, what are you up to these days? You just literally <laughs> ran out of gas and then stalled out. On I the walked road. up. I walked up. I grabbed the mic out of Bryce's Someone hand. Someone else hands and I said, hey, somebody who's not me, handle this mic, right? And then I you just like I just stormed up, grabbed the mic, and said, hey, I gotta go. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, 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 Mike. Uh, uh, what is what is uh, what is what is happening here? You're streaming a lot still, right? I am. Yeah. So I'm still. I, so yeah. So I, I changed my schedule around. So um, so I've got my buddy Boone Graham joins me on Mondays, and then and then Trey, who's of of the your wrestling show fame. Uh, of course, yeah, Trey Warren. Yeah, he actually he actually joins me on Tuesday nights right before right before the normal night attack. And then, um, yeah, so I'm doing a lot of streaming, but I'm, I'm just now finishing up. I, I just finished the last, the last primary mix today of a 45 song album that, uh, is going to be coming out, uh, in the middle of September, unless I think I might, if I'm t- reaching out to, uh, some old radio promotion people and, and depending on what the kind of schedule they can work it on, I might actually push it back a little bit just so I can actually get it pushed to, you know, radio stations across the nation. So Get it on yeah. the radio. So, wait, what, yeah. what, all right, so what kind of radio stations are you pushing it to? Because I, I am not uh, aware that rock radio is still a thing. Oh, yeah, no, no. It's, <laughs> it's just, just college, college stations. What are you, so, what are you having yeah. brunch over there, you colonial? Fuck you. Yeah. Wait, wait, wait. Actually, you, you want to know what? I'll actually take that back. I've heard more rock radio stations in the last three years in, in major markets than I did the past ten years before that. Like, like as radio slowly dies and, like, uh, the pop stations and the rap stations kind of become the exact same thing. There are are now opportunities to be like, I don't know. People do always bitch about how the rock station went away. Let's bring back the rock station. Yeah, and and that's, now and, now and, grunge is classic oh. rock. Yeah, and that's and the thing is, yeah, not and not commercial radio. Uh, I'm focusing on college radio stations and AAA stations and all the like the KCRWs. If you know KCRW in LA or. or yeah. um, uh, K K E X P in Seattle, like you know, like those like those stations that are a little bit NPR also have cool music, uh, you know, s- segments of uh, like blocks during their their um, yeah their yeah, and so and so we've done the last so that, time yeah, we K- did- KCRW does morning becomes eclectic, is that them? Yeah, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, that's yeah, that's exactly them. So so it's it's so it's 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 from them 
it's from them. Um, it's on one side. It's it's like the college stations, like 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 KXLU in LA, and then on the other side, it's it's like the bigger, like the KCRWs and the and the and the K KEXPs, and so um, yeah, and so I so I'm 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 t- just talking to them. The thing is, it's usually it's not it's not ultra expensive. Um, but the thing is, is that like, I just need to make sure I just want to get ba- good bang for my buck. But, um, I think a 45 song album where every song is pretty strong, um, is, is a story, you know? And so I think that if I got it out there, like it might, it might, you know, turn some heads. Uh, dude, that is awesome. Do you know a name for the album yet? I do. It's called, this is why we can't have nice things. Nice. Nice. Yeah. And, the night uh, attack story. Uh, any of the. Crowd written the chat written songs on no because uh, all right so that's so the thing is like so we're at, we're at six we're at six songs right now so six songs as soon as we get ten songs I'm gonna go into the studio and do full blown studio renditions of the songs we're gonna come up with a name for the band and we're gonna I, I'm not certain if we're gonna actually put it out but I was even I was even thinking it might be fun to actually put together a band I've got an, I know enough friends like put together a band and just do one show playing all those songs live so playing so all I have the somebody, songs what's that. Uh, just playing all this. I'll, I'll, if you guys do an act with that, I, I want I want to be a part of it. I, okay, I don't yeah, know. I don't know awesome. how I would fit in, but I I will. That is such a rad idea. I would love to be a part of a one night only show with uh with with all the songs. Because for people who don't know, uh, Mike streams, and every once in a while he'll just say, "Hey, look, chat, you come up with the lyrics. I'll give you a melody. I'll give you a progression. But like, if I'm uh, and, and I've never seen you do it, but I can only imagine that you're like, all right, we need a huh, ma, ma, na, ma, ma, na, ma, ma. What, what is our ma, 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 na, ma, ma, na, ma, ma. And people will just type shit and you build piece by piece these songs. And one of them, Paleophile, which you played on the show a couple of weeks ago, is fucking amazing. It's really good. Yeah, man, it's it's been it's crazy. So we have we have six songs and pound for pound, all six songs are really strong. Like we have a while you guys were doing the flaming, sh- the very first one that we wrote with with basically a heavy Diamond Club influence was was uh, called Go Drunk Your Home, and it's all about flaming shots. And oh, then nice. and then we've and then uh, and then we and then yeah and then and then every other song we've written has been has just been uh, like pretty much pretty much like great they're great songs you know and then we actually wrote one I was like all right guys because when I proposed to twitch that that I do a panel talking about um, writing original music with your audience um, I was like all right guys I want to show them we can actually do a straight song and so we wrote a song called apple cart that that, that is fucking uh, it's awesome it's poignant and super and I'm like I'm like, there's nothing these guys can't do. You know, it's just like, I know it's, it's awesome. So it's like not, the, I mean, cause, cause a lot of them obviously is anything on the internet going to skew to the memes or the jokes or the grossness, right? Like as everybody yeah. kind of pushes each other's buttons, but you're like, no, let's keep it straight. And yeah. fuck if you didn't. Yeah. And it was great. And, and the story, it's a, it's a, got an awesome story and it's got a really good hook and it's, I'm like, this is perfect. And so, yeah, it's, it's, and so we, we're going to be writing four more songs and then I'm just gonna keep doing it. So I'm gonna, we're gonna once we get ten songs, I'm gonna go into the studio, I'll record them all, and we'll just keep doing it. And and each time we hit get another ten songs, I'll put out another record. You know, so it, yeah, I think it'll be a lot of fun. And and oh yeah, and then, and then every person that contributes to it. In fact, if you guys watching, if somebody, if one of you contributed to one of our shows, even if you threw out an idea and it wasn't used, um, if you can give me your name, because sometimes those ideas, people bounce off those ideas to other ideas. So if you were contributing at all, any ideas, then you should get songwriter credit. And so what I want to do, when I when this when these songs are done, I want to register them with BMI, and I want to have a list of like forty names for each song, just because I think that'll be. I think that in and of itself is also a story, you know. So 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 uh, they can get the fraction of a cent that uh, uh, the song gets from Spotify. Well, but, but, and, the, but like the more importantly, the credit, micro right? fraction of a cent. Yeah, but but until uh, other things, I mean, I'm fairly certain that if we kept this up, right? If we if we kept putting out records that were like, were all kind of crowdsourced records, you know, that were actually good songs, someone somewhere is, at some point in time is going to pay attention. And there's a good, ch- I mean, there's a chance that maybe somebody licenses one of their songs, you know, like they are ridiculous. So, um, you know, and so and then when that when that time comes, if there is a payday, it it gets split with all everybody. <laughs> and I think that'll be awesome if everyone oh gets God, like, I got to check for fifty bucks, you know. Uh, no, that is fucking uh, uh, super rad. So everybody, go ahead and follow uh, twitch.tv slash Mike TV Live, right? Mike TV Live is your Twitch yeah, handle. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah. That's me. Yep. Oh. And you can look for Paleophile on uh, uh, Grey's Anatomy. Uh, next yeah, week. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
So uh, also look for Grey's Anatomy coming back. Uh, I think it's with still on. Is they it, are, yeah. They're they're in their on. like their eleventh season or twelfth. No 12th. shit. It's, it's ridiculous. Yeah, they're they're still cook, going strong, man. They're, are they covering sticky tits in there? And I the think they, pro- they, they I think that was probably six seasons ago. I think okay. they were well okay. ahead, well ahead of the Shonda's curve. Ahead of the oh curve. my god, these sticky tits <laughs> won't come off. Uh, I wonder if I'm sad and if I'm going to fuck a my in it. Probably. So there's a grenade stuck. <laughs> I'm the new doctor and I've got to say these sticky tits have got to go away. <laughs> sticky tits. <laughs> no, is that, not that would like be that? a weird. That would be a weird turn for the venerable franchise of Grey's Anatomy to Wouldn't turn. Wouldn't be that weird for Grey's Anatomy. <laughs> <laughs> Just French Nutter shows up. Yeah, yeah. it's like, are you gonna do all your lines in the in the Love Shack thing? Like, Shonda Rhimes called down and said that uh, that's what she wanted. So that's what we're going with. This flesh-eating bac- bacteria was born from the uh, unwashed sticky tip. <laughs> this bacteria was totally born from a non-washed sticky tit. Um, <laughs> you know what's great about that is because there's not a lot of like pitch element. The rhythm is is you really gotta get that. I think Brian, you really got the the rhythm. <laughs> Love Thank Jack. you. I'm glad I'm glad I'm not that good. Hey, let's talk about the winter movie draft. I got a. Uh, did you uh, did did you get looped in on the new commissioner's uh, proposed list for the winter movie draft, Justin? I did. I did. Uh, we got to make a couple calls on exactly uh, when this shit is happening. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Kingsman. Uh, Ninjago. Battle of the Sexes and Stronger. I don't know anything about any of those. Uh, well, oh, N- Ninjago is the new Lego franchise right. movie. Right, Ninjago. Ninjago. Yeah, uh, Nick, N- Nick Django, that's the name now. <laughs> okay. Try saying something else. I'll change it even worse. No, never mind. Uh, okay. <laughs> I like I'm punishing. Um, <laughs> I know the bit wasn't that good, but Jesus Christ, let me live. <laughs> Drag me to Who's death the millennial now? <laughs> so Nick Jackoff, that's a series, right? Uh, Kingsman, Battle of the Sexes is stronger. Uh, so we we did. So we got a list. Uh, Eileen Rivera and uh, I believe I, uh, one of her coworkers at, at Rotten Tomatoes put together a really good perspective list, um, which I think we can share right now. Kingsman, Ninjago, Battle of the Sexes is stronger. Flatliners, American Made. This uh, this Flatliners, real quick, is that just a full on remake of the yep. '80s yep. classic? Yep. Huh. yep. Mm. Um, American made. Yeah, except now they're they're new and sexy. Millennials. They're round liners. Wait, wait, wait. wait. What, what are you gonna k- kill? Uh, uh, Flatliners next. Sure. Uh, American made. Blade Runner. My Little Pony. Mountain Between Us. My Little Pony. Yeah. Go go on. <laughs> this is gonna be a movie. <laughs> uh, Happy Death Day. The Foreigner. Tyler Perry. Boo Two. Is that nice? Th- finally, yeah. finally. Uh, Geostorm and the Snowstorm. That's, a, that's an interesting pairing. Jigsaw, Suburbicon, A Bad Mom's Christmas, the, Thor Ragnarok. Re- real oh. quick, the Jigsaw, is that a, uh, is that I a think that's Saw another, yeah, spinoff? I think that's another Saw. Wait, hold on. A Bad th- a bad Mom's Christmas is the sequel to Bad Moms? I think so. That sounds right. I think so. These uh, moms are fucking terrible, man. <laughs> they're they're, 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 the they're not great. Those moms, not great. Uh, Daddy's Home 2, Murder on the Mine. Orient Express, Justice League, Wonder. Whoa, course, whoa, whoa, whoa. Hold on, hon. Justice Woman. League is, what, two weeks after 11-17 uh, versus 11-3? Yeah. So two weeks after Thor Ragnarok, they're going to come in and try to steal yeah. that. Yeah. Huh. Uh, All right. Coco, Molly's Game, The Disaster Artist. It's the uh, Tommy Wiseau yeah, dude. mockumentary. You're the breaking sh- my heart, Lisa. Wait, is it? Is it a mockumentary? I thought it was just a straight no, up dramatic. No, it, it, it's an oh, adaptation yeah, of so. the yeah, book, yeah. The Disaster Artist, which yeah, was written so. by the the best friend. I don't think Tommy, but uh, the, one of the other guys, the guys who was in the movie who wrote the book about that whole process. Right. Uh, the Last Jedi, The Shape of Water, Pitch Perfect 3, Jumanji. The Last Jedi. The Last Jedi. Hmm. Uh, and The Greatest Showman. Uh, Greatest Showman, that's a P.T. Barnum story. Uh, P.T. Barnum musical. Ye- it's yeah. a musical. Oh, wow. Featuring uh, yeah. it's an actual it's Logan. actually an opera. It's just nothing but music. There's no featuring Wolverine. 
I think, listen, there's some... I would say that the winter movie draft is fast becoming just as interesting, if not more, than the summer movie draft. Like, the shit that they're releasing in the winter now is not just the kind of Oscar movie uh, glut that we usually used to get, which never really made any money, which made it less interesting. Here, you got some... You got a lot of flicks, a lot of franchise yeah, flicks that really make cash. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's so, uh, yeah, uh, But meanwhile... You know, the, the Last Jedi is a big question because, like it was last time, the way we're going to do it is whoever wants to go all in on it, you can, everybody can bid 100 if they want. But then the question is how much less of yeah. the uh, box office are you willing to take? No, I think, I think, I think very quickly people are, are, I don't want to say recoiling, but, but, but like they're backing off from, from going all in on any one movie. Cause I mean, obviously nobody's, what what seemed obvious two years ago was that going all in on Star Wars was a winning strategy, but that's less and less true by the minute. Well, but also, going all in on Star Wars makes sense if you're going all in on Star Wars and getting 95% of Star Wars, right? Mm. Going all in on Star Wars does not make a lot of sense if you are getting 75%. I don't know. I mean, I guess we got we to gotta look back at the old, uh, the old tallies, but... Yeah, uh, we'll check that uh, oh, out. I, Tell you what, uh, I, I am pumped. Uh, we got to start reaching out though, because if that first movie is the twenty second, we only got like, you know, because remember our our first week is already spoken for with Dragon Con, so we only have yeah. two weeks after that. Yeah, uh, yeah, that's uh, September twenty second, I believe. So we've got some time. Will you guys want me to do music for? Because it, it would be that would be great if I if I could get that started now. Yes, yes. I could actually have yes. some good you, stuff. You yes. have it now. Yeah. Hi, uh, okay. it's a new segment we call booking guests live on the air. <laughs> Hi, you're on the air with Night Attack. We'd like you to be a guest. Can we book you? Uh, can I can I call a friend? No. You, no, yeah. fuck no? you. Millennials <laughs> killed that too. Millennials. <laughs> I sent you the list, Mike. So. Okay, awesome. Thank uh, all you. All right. Thank well, you. I'll tell you what. How about this? Uh, everybody, uh, what do you say we check out a little bit of Diamond Time? Wait, Diamond Time? Explain to me this Diamond Time. What's Diamond Time? Diamond Time is when you can shout out your own projects right here on the show. Just head on over to our Reddit. That is reddit.com slash r slash diamond club or diamondclub.reddit.com. The sticky post right at the top. The top three voted uh, topics get read out beginning this week with Open Bayou, who writes, We're getting close. Dragon Con is only two weeks away and things are moving fast. If you need a room, are willing to share your room with others, or you need a ride to Atlanta, we have a doc for you. Let us, lo- let us know who's going to Dragon Con and look to share a ride and or a room. Bit.ly slash DC uh, number two DC or... Uh, DC, uh, T.O. DC. We've narrowed down the Diamond Club outside activities. Either Six Flags over Georgia, the Georgia Aquarium, or both. Let us know which one you want to do by filling out the survey. It's a great way surface. to narrow things down is to give two choices and then offer both of them as a well, choice. I think they hey, were listen, talking man. about like- uh, 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 When you are dealing with an open dock with no leader, I think the fact that they got it down to two is a fucking miracle of science. I agree, I agree. Uh, bit.ly slash Delta Hub is where you take that survey. And finally, the schedule for Dragon Con is out. Night Attack and Jury's One Man Show are both on Saturday night. You can buy a Saturday only badge for only 50 bucks from the, uh, at the Sheridan Atlanta Hotel, but there will be a limited amount available for purchase. So get there early before they run out. The schedule so far, times in Eastern, obviously, and subject to change without notice, is. Geek I.O. Show, Friday night at 8.30. Scott Sigler, Friday night at 11.30. The JKP Podcast with special guest Bill Duran, Saturday afternoon at 1. Uh, getting the word out, introducing your show, blah, 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 boring panel. Uh, Saturday afternoon with me, <laughs> 2.30. Jury Talks, here are the big ones. Jury Talks, the OPP show that is other people's problems. Same show uh, with different stories that we did at Nerdtacular. Saturday night at 7 p.m. in the Hilton Galleria 6. Uh, Night Attack, Saturday night, 10 p.m., Marriott, A601 and 602, following Five Truths and a Lie at 8.30. So don't be surprised if it gets moved back a little bit. (laughs) Uh, And Pokemon Go with Brian Ibbett, Sunday afternoon at 5.30, joining a podcast network panel with Justin, uh, Sunday at 7 p.m. Joining a podcast network is going to be an entire thing. Huh. Yeah. 
Uh, and now I'm on a panel talking about the merits and the uh, detriments of <laughs> what, joining. What, what, what are you going to say about like ways to sever ties with podcast networks? You got anything <laughs> on that one? Well, you know, the key is, is what you want to do is have everything be really, really great for about two months and then hear a back channel rumor, get drunk and overreact to it and then let them overreact even further. <laughs> right. So, so, so children across the board, right? Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. That, that's, that's my suggestion. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to sever ties with a network, then make sure you get drunk and talk about rumors of being banned. Uh, mildly depressing shit ahead. Sorry. <clears throat> hey, guys, I'm a 17 year old acute limbo f limpho <laughs> lymphoblastic. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Uh, lymphoblastic leukemia patient with my last treatment in October. I was diagnosed when I was 15. I've seen some shit and you guys have really helped me through it. Uh, that means a lot to hear. I try to do my best to help out the little kids at the hospital whenever I can because with, uh, because a case of leukemia, not in an elementary school aged kid or younger is very rare. And the vast majority of patients are just babies. Some less lucky people go into remission and relapse requiring a bone marrow transplant plant. However, uh, close relatives are only about 25 to 50% chance to be genetically close enough. And when they aren't, uh, and when they aren't, they need a stranger to help to join the reg registry is free. Ooh, here we go. Uh, just fill out a form, wait for the mail, swab your cheek, send it back and wait for somebody to call you. They probably won't, but you know, uh, if they do, you could literally save some kid's life. Uh, okay, I'm, I'm about to give this URL. Let me just tell you some real shit. Um, I have a friend of mine. Uh, he's a PhD, uh, Jim Lowhouse. Uh, he's served in Iraq, and uh, he talked to me about the experience of donating bone marrow. And um, he did it just out of nowhere because he knew it was the right thing to do. Because at the end of at the end of your life. You, they're going to put your name on a rock and they're going to bury your fucking retarded meat down in there. And you're going to either have done something that matters or not. And he wanted to have done something that matters. And uh, I admire him very much for doing this. And I think right now I am feeling the call to uh, definitely put my shit out there. Sign up at tinyurl.com slash, uh, he has it with a capital C, I don't know if that's the case, cancer is a bitch YOLO 420 swag. That's <laughs> tinyurl.com <laughs> I love slash. that. I love that. Like while you were winding up on that, all I could do is look at that link and be like, "This is gonna be the perfect <laughs> fucking punchline for you." Just like at some point you're gonna die, and then all your memories will be is is what you did to help everybody. So please join the movement. Tinyurl.com/slash cancer is a bitch YOLO port twenty swag today. <laughs> Uh, no, no, I'm definitely feeling it. He says because it's based on genetics, they're particularly in need of registry members that are litter that are literally anything but white. Uh, sorry, can't help you there. Does well, pink you count? Can help, but <laughs> does does pink count? Uh, and I guess a shitload of white people have joined. I swear I'm not racist. Uh, remains to be determined, Robo Man five one seven. But uh, but we thank you for for encouraging everyone. We've um, got we've got we've got many non whites who are listening to this right now. And uh, uh, guess what, non-whites? It's on you to do something. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's called, uh, <clears throat> it's the non-white man or woman's burden. No? Okay. Mm -hmm. Hey, Daphne Games writes, Tay Allen is trying to get on the amazing race. Go to dctv.link slash Tay race to see her audition. I don't know if we can help her out, but I think we need uh, her back on the show. Tweeting at Amazing Race CBS probably couldn't hurt. Heck, yes. Sorry, I'm in the middle of uh, looking at Be the Match uh, to put my shit on a bone marrow journey. Good time for that. Yeah, no. Uh, uh, <laughs> yeah, right, right in the middle of the show is a good time. Justin, t uh, 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 give me two minutes. Oh, you literally did it again it, the second time in like 15 <laughs> minutes that you did the hijack the show and then get away from me with the show bit. I'm sorry. I'm a bad man. It's I'm a bad man. Like I'm a, it's a bad show. We're bad people. No, I, I never should have 
pretended that we could do this. It was a fraud Before from a the start. Ten years. Yeah, this 10 years has been a total sham, and finally I'm revealed for the fraud I am. I'm he sorry. takes his face oh, off. Oh, oh, it's right. me, <laughs> Jack Sparrow. <laughs> it's for a good fucking reason. I'm trying to donate bone marrow know, for Christ's sake. I know, I know, I know, I know. I'm, I'm not saying that you shouldn't sign up for the bone marrow registry. All right, Tay Allen, if you're not aware, has been a, a friend of the show for a very long time. Uh, uh, why didn't you get your mass tech? She's in your contacts. Uh, and we are, are very, very excited uh, that anything uh, she does, including uh, uh, the nice pooper. <laughs> That was unexpected. Uh, so <laughs> I, I think that's it for the show. Mike TV. What's going on, man? You got, a, you got something you want to plug? Uh, not not. I, at some point I will, but yeah, not yet. I'm I'm still kind of sorting out schedules. But I mean, obviously the show. If you guys are interested in some mu music or or uh, I do on s Fridays, no, like tonight, I do a storytelling thing. So if there's a song you want to know the origins of and what went into it, why yes, and Mike. Why I wrote it. I, I am currently registered to be an organ donor, and I've previously donated blood or platelets. Really? You don't say. It's good. Huh. It's good. Huh. I'm in good health. Uh, that's, uh, oh, yeah, well, that's good, huh? J so tell me. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. What's up? Do you, do you, are, are you currently using, or do you know anyone that uses the sticky tits uh, uh, moisture entrapment tools? <laughs> moisture entrapment tool. <laughs> Uh, uh, is this like an interrogation? Like, no, 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 no. I was, yeah, he, was, he, was, he was asking, he was, he was like, he was telling me about the, I was, I was going to play the opposite side of him signing up to the, to oh, the, gotcha. uh, yeah. oh, to yeah, the, yeah. To the bone marrow thing. Yeah. Making sure uh, he's uh, qualified. Well, I'll tell you what, uh, uh listen, it, it ain't quite uh, donating bone, bone marrow, but if you want to really do good to somebody specifically me, you can go ahead on over to stickersordiaf.com because we got a brand new sticker set that was all drawn by your friend and mine, Air for Dogs, Scott Johnson. Awesome. Uh, uh, brand new $5 sticker pack gets you all five of Scott's brand new Diamond Club uh, oh, awesome. infused illustrations. Oh, and the mega pack uh, will not only get you the five new ones from Scott Johnson, but also... Our meme squad pack uh, that includes uh, uh, Matthew Sargent uh, uh, stuff that are all meme related and an original Ruin and Wine label and a uh, jury will buy you a drink token. Also, all orders this week will get a uh, brand new limited edition while supplies last diamond club patch like an iron on patch. It is awesome. So go ahead and check that out. Stickers or D.I.A.F. dot com. Uh, also, one last thing. Uh, it's it's a little too soon to get it in time for Dragon Con, but if you're going to Scoop Fest, you can order it now and get it and represent there. Bits.ly slash NA shirt. We got shirts, hoodies, women's sizes, pullovers. Uh, Justin, you got how how Justin, you got the zip up of the gold. Uh, I do. Uh, I got my gold Diamond Club uh, 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 hoodie, man. Yeah. I was rocking it all Saturday. It was pretty sweet. Yeah. I appreciate the quality and effort put into it, and I think that you will as well. Bit.ly slash N-A shirt. Uh, uh, by the way, uh, real quick, people are asking, uh, uh, I'm going to be at Dragon Con. Should we buy them there or order now? Uh, I might have a few of them with me at Dragon Con, but I am not box. setting up a fucking table. And I am certainly not selling them. So if you catch me and I got one, then maybe. But if you want for sure, specifically a jury will buy you a drink token for Dragon Con. Order now. Everything that got ordered today is going to go into the mail tomorrow. And that should get to you pretty much anywhere around the country. Cool. Uh, oh, one last thing. Mike, we, we heard the, the Nugs song at the, at the top of the show with Will Harris. Uh, is that any? Is that linked anywhere? Are you? Are you know, you it, it's yet? it's it's not. Um, I I definitely want to do just a, a a real quick polish on it, but I will mm -hmm. um I will shoot you a link and I I'll make it available. I'll 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 let us I'll, know. We'll I'll it tweet out. it out. I'll tweet it out. I'll I'll get it to you guys. Um, and then yeah, and then if you guys if you guys can't find it, just come out, reach out to me at the show. I'm I'm streaming five days a week, and 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 let me know, and I'll I'll give you the link. Um, so there'll be a bunch of different ways you can get it. Heck yeah, man. Dude, meanwhile, guess who just got back from BeTheMatch.org? Guess who is in the registry? Definitely gonna give bone marrow for free. It's me. I'm great, you see, because I give bone marrow on a live show. Wee! 
No. no. Uh, Brian, anything you want to get out? Uh, no. Uh, I'm excited to see everyone at Dragon Con. It's going to be great. Um, it's going to be great. It's going to be great. Uh, to be honest, Justin, I'm, I'm excited about us, you and me, hanging out. Um, let me let me give a heads up to you guys. I got a galley copy of a book called uh, Here's Real Magic by my friend Nate Staniforth. We've talked about him on the show. He's one of the best magicians I've ever seen. And more importantly, he grocks the heart of magic in a way that I've never seen from anyone else in my entire career. Um, books coming out later this year. I'm going to talk a lot about it, but uh, keep, keep, keep an eye out for that. Nate Staniforth is great. How about that? Uh, dude, Staniforth is the man. All right, Brian, what have we learned? Man, we learned that uh, apparently Friday night is as good as a Tuesday night. Uh, we learned that uh, the millennials are killing our second act. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> we learned that Mike TV is one of the generous and kind-hearted individuals that makes this world great. Uh, we've learned that Bonnie can't spell calligraphy. <laughs> <laughs> we learned that sticky dicks is not an affliction. It's a, a right and a privilege. <laughs> See you next, See you next Tuesday. Tuesday. Time to fire. Diamond Club hopes you have enjoyed this program. <laughs>